Welcome back friends. Last lesson we started building out from scratch a very very basic minter function. It doesn't mint anything just yet but it's going to become the basis of how we mint our curve stable coin. But until we learn a bit more about variables we can't flesh these functions out. We'd like to get this minter function to connect to the ERC20 token and be able to mint. The problem is the default implementation of the ERC20 token we're using doesn't have a mint function so this token has no way of minting itself. We'll fix that and learn a bit about state variables along the way. First up, for an idea of what we're going to be covering in this lesson, let's pop through our brownie tests. And we can see in the tests.diff file that in order for us to pass this unit, we're going to be able to need to update the token's balance and total supply successfully when we mint. And as you can see in the right hand screen here, we're going to get to the test minter and not be capable of doing so. Not to worry. If we look at our contracts and open up the token, we'll head to the very bottom where we're going to use what we learned about functions in the previous lesson to add a mint function. So far we've learned about decorating all functions with a scope. We've only talked about external for the time being, which allows us to be readable from the ABI and we will launch a mint function. Last time we just learned how to create a blank function like this. This time we're going to add variables to be input into this function. There's several different types within Viper and we encourage you to check out the documentation to learn more about all of them. We're only interested in two particular types in this case. We would like to have an address of a user to receive tokens and we like the amount that they would like to receive. So addresses are pretty easy. As you can see from the documentation here, addresses are going to come with uh, some few extra properties, but all we care about this at this point is a to address, which will type cast as an address. And we would like this to address to receive some amount of tokens. We'll make these uint256. Unsigned integers are among the most common and uh, uint256 is generally the default when you're dealing with integers. They also have a lot of other capabilities. You can do smaller intervals, but uint256 is going to make this fairly, uh, fairly standard as far as tokens go. Last unit, we also talked about doc strings. We always want to pass the notice to the user of what this function does. In this case it just mints tokens. Uh, last time we didn't have params, uh, but if you have parameters to pass to it, you can also include uh, doc strings that describe the params. The way you'll do this is you'll pass the param and then the parameter name. And then for example on etherscan it might pick this up and include this as helpful tips when users are minting. So we have a param of the address to receive tokens a param of the number of tokens to mint. And our function is looking nice and beautiful. We saw that there were two things that we had to do in order for this test to pass. The first thing is we need to update the total supply. Smart contracts, in addition to just sitting on chain being able and ready to handle any instructions you send to it, also have the capability of modifying their state. Uh, hence, we call these state variables. You can read a bit more about this in the uh, link here. State variables are values that are permanently stored in the contract storage, so it costs gas to interact with them. But this is the meat of the token. So any ERC20 token is going to have things like decimals that are uint256s like we saw, a name and a symbol that are strings. Strings have to be passed in Viper as the fixed maximum length. Total supply is simply going to update this total supply by adding the amount of tokens we're minting. So that one's fairly easy to accomplish. Whenever we're dealing with state variables from within a function, the scope of this function needs to refer to the entire, uh, entire contract that we're dealing with. So we call self to access these state variables. And here the self total supply will be equal to itself plus the amount of tokens we're minting. Similarly, we need to update the user's balances. 
And this is a unique, unique state uh, variable type called a hash map. We're not going to talk about it in too much depth today, but you can think of it for the time being like an associative array. So we look up an address and we store a uint256 with this. In this case, this is representing the user's balance. And we'll also again access this with self, but the balances are going to update exactly as if this was an array. We've got the basics of a token here. Let's rerun our tests and see if this works. Of course, we might pass the tests, but you're well away from wanting to deploy this. Should you deploy this function, anybody could go and call this mint function. Not terribly secure. Uh, it's still not hooked up to our minter, so we still have a lot of work yet to do. But the good news is our tests are now passing, so that means we have successfully completed this unit. Feel free, as always, to drop any questions and comments in, in the comments to this or anywhere you might find us. We look forward to seeing you next unit as we're going to get even further into smart contracts with Viper.